music box programming tutorial. This is the third and ultimate music box set, and this is. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Have you seen the latest Winter Gotten video? Of course. Wow. Don't you think it looks very hard to punch all of those holes in the music box paper? I sure do. Looks like it takes forever. You know what? I bet we could make a machine to do that automatically. <gasps> I think we could. <gasps> Let's see if any new developments arise. I think if you were good with writing software, you could write a software that takes MIDI and makes a laser cutting template and you can just put these papers into the laser cutter and have the laser cutter to cut perfect holes with perfect timing. What an intriguing idea. I bet that would work. But you know what? What? Building machines sounds like so much fun. <laughs> it does. What are you suggesting? Let's build our own music box punching paper paper pu hole punch machine. That sounds like a great idea. This victory. Wow. Josh, this is incredible. That, wow. I say it works. You know, it seems like it works. So here it is. We are a little bit late to the party. Um, this problem was already solved like a week and a half ago uh, by a team of people who made this work for not a laser cutter, but a vinyl cutter. Um, so that was pretty cool, but we still want to show what we made. What was very hard that we kind of thought might be hard, but it was way harder than I thought it would be, was getting the hole punch right. We went through a bunch of iterations. We tried it with like two solenoids pulling this lever down and with a, with a punch that was machined on a lathe. Um, but the holes weren't clean. The solenoids weren't strong enough. We had to repeatedly just like bash it over and over again to try to get a hole. And then when it did, the circles were still hanging on on the back of the paper and we had to pull them off. And the holes were also oversized and it wasn't, it wasn't good.
tried to remachine that punch a few times to make it better and it didn't work. And we also tried to replace those two solenoids with one big solenoid and it still wasn't strong enough. For the punch, eventually, what we figured out was we could use the original punch tip that came with the original uh, punch that came with the music box and put that in the end of this rod and that worked a lot better. Once we got the hole on the other side, the die, once we got that sized correctly and lined up, that worked well. Um, but the solenoid still wasn't strong enough to pull it through, so we ended up moving to this motor with a lead screw that would just pulls it down with a constant force and then pushes it back out. And that's sufficiently strong. That's more than strong enough. And that's been working well. Otherwise, the rest of it wasn't so bad. Electronically, it might look a little complicated, but really it's all just direct connections. There's no complicated circuitry to do. You just hook everything together and it pretty much works. I think pretty much anyone who's determined could make something like this. Um, the hardest part is definitely the punch. <laughs> definitely using the original punch tip is a good idea. I think there's a lot of ways this design can be improved, but um, we do have all the parts that we use for this one listed online if you want to see or if you're interested. So far, we have printed out a bunch of bunch of test songs. These are some of the original songs with giant holes that mm -hmm. <laughs> that span two notes. Giant not working. Line holes. This is a big calibration sheet. Yep. And we were testing carriage drift. It turned out that with the hard stops and starts, uh, the stepper motor for the carriage was skipping steps sometimes, and what we the solution was to make it accelerate slowly instead of starting us stopping hard. But once we got it working, uh, we were able to print a few mm -hmm. songs. So we punched like six or seven meters of paper we so far. Punched a lot and. The, the weakest link of this machine, which we think is the punch, is, is powering through as hard as it was to get it right. As it is now, it seems pretty solid, which yeah. is very exciting. So, basic gist of this method versus the laser cutter, right? So you might want to do something like this, first of all, if you just want to make a machine, because that was our main reason, like building stuff. Um, but if you want to not have to splice together the paper after it comes out of the, of the vinyl cutter, if you want to do one continuous strip, you don't have to do any post-processing on after it prints out. Or really, really long songs. Or really, really long you songs. do not want to splice it. Yeah. If you're doing low volume stuff, it's definitely easier to just laser cut it and join them together. If you have access to a, a vinyl cutter or a laser cutter. So, we are about to punch another song. <laughs> We're gonna punch Let It Be by the Beatles um, right now. So, if you wanna see how we do it, come along. <laughs> Stick around. So, the basic idea here is we have a piece of software that takes a MIDI file and, and then produces output in a text file that the Arduino can read to actually punch the notes. So sort of a cool part of this approach is that you could theoretically do your own piece of software over here as long as it outputs the same text file. And you could also make your own completely different punching mechanism as long as it reads the same text file. So like it's sort of a modular thing. But let's get cracking. So it's a load of songs so we can see what we're dealing with. Let's take the classic Indiana Jones. The classic. So this is the note display for the Indiana Jones theme song as played on a 20 note music box. So over on the left, it shows which notes are on the music box. So these are just the, the default values to start with, but you can change these. We just want that to be like a, I don't know, five or something. Then you can see the A5 is jumped up here because that's where they would be played. This is showing where all the notes would go, um, as well as uh, sort of this error line wherever there's a note that can't be played. And it tells you what that note is so that you can go back into your MIDI file and edit it. We don't have A sharp fives, what will we do? Oh, what if we play it on a different music box, like a 30 note oh, one? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So the other key thing here is this length scale at the bottom, which shows you in like real world centimeters how long this would be. And you can adjust that scale down here. So that error that it's showing is that these notes are too close together now for them to be played mm -hmm. right in a row. It'll only play the second one because they're too close for the mechanism of the music box to handle. 
So if you want it to fix that all for you automatically, you get everything in view and you hit resolve spacing. Space it far enough apart that every note can be played. Let's do the one we actually want to do. Let it be. So all the notes fit because we already went through and arranged the MIDI file so that all the notes would fit, took out some bass line, rearranged some chords. So how long are we thinking this one's going to be? So if we make sure that we get the minimum possible spacing here, we got 448 centimeters just about. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so it'll be about uh, five and a half meters, four and a half meters long. So the next part of the workflow over here is you export this guy. You say where you want to put it. Oh, we forgot to go get the memory card. Take this. Here we go. So we can see the text file that that program outputs. It's got some header information. This is the number of notes on the box. Um, some ge geometric information about the paper itself. Dimensions. How many notes are in the song? About 600. Mm -hmm. How much total length of paper it's going to take. And then the actual data. But if you made the machine differently, if you made the machine to accept uh, shorter or wider strips of paper, you could easily just change some variables around and get it punching whatever whatever kind of music box paper you want. Yeah. So let's take our text file, put it in our little SD card, and get punching. All right. We got it. Let's get out of here. We're going to load the paper. Looking good. Now we turn on the machine and the SD card. Pop it in, pop it in. Uh, these are all the files on the card that we've been printing before, and this is what we want. So, we've got a little bit of information. We've got the name of the song. Uh, what music box uh, the file was made for, and this paper length estimate. So, we're gonna hit play, and we'll see what happens. Check back soon. <laughs> So we had a little bit of a malfunction. Uh, I think that these notes are a few beats too soon or something. I think there'll be a timing thing that'll okay. be weird for a second, but I think it'll work <clears throat> to figure that out. I think we might have spaced it out a little bit too much. I'd have to be pretty fast. <laughs> oh. 